I would love to talk about the phenomenon that often unfolds when we are on the brink of massive change. And I relate to it as a spiritual depression. If you're new here, my name is Xavier Dagba. And the whole purpose of this space is to spark conversations that ignite self-liberation. So let's dive into spiritual depression. And as we're diving in there, let me make a clear distinction. I'm not talking about your regular depression, kind of clinical depression. Even though they may have, you know, intersections. That's not what I'm talking about here. Your kind of psychological kind of depression. No, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about a specific phenomenon that may unfold in your life as you are going through changes. So very often we have moments that often spark or invite massive change. It can be a spiritual awakening. It can be even a breakup. It can be a massive radical change in your life that makes you realize, wow, I have not been doing things the way my soul intended to do them. And you feel this pull, you feel this invitation to shift things radically. The first thing that often happens is when we hear these impulses to change our lives radically, sometimes we are not quite aware of them. We just carry a feeling of unease. It's as if life is not flowing as we would love it to flow. And sometimes we disregard these feelings. And suddenly, for many people, we arrive to a point of no return where we realize, holy crap, things have not really been going the way I would love them to go. It can look like a middle life crisis. It can look like after, you know, after a loss, you realize that you have been pursuing things that are not that necessarily meaningful or as meaningful as you thought they were. You are just following the social norm of you, who you thought you were supposed to be. So very often, Here's something that may happen. We may resist that change. We may resist the, the calling to actually shift things around. And usually in these moments, it's as if energy slows down around us. It's as if everything starts to move slow. Getting out of bed in the morning is slower. Feeling driven to do anything is a lot more hard, a lot more difficult. Because there is a core misalignment between the way we live and between our core values. A core misalignment between the way we're living and what truly really matters to our heart. So it takes some time to begin to even recognize that core misalignment. That space of almost being at a standstill, it's as if energy is denser, energy is slower. What is actually the space of a spiritual depression? As if your soul just turned up the volume inside of your body, inside of your psyche, asking of you, pay attention. Pay attention. I'm going to give an analogy. It's as if you were driving a car 100 miles that way, and suddenly you feel like you need to shift directions. Sometimes it demands that you slow down and that you start turning around. And that slowing down of energy that is actually working in your favor is that space of spiritual depression. It is as if you have invited a change in your life and you have no way of turning back around now. You have no way of, you know, choosing to run away from the change that you've called forth. And yet a part of you is still in resistance. So the first thing when we realize that we are in that space where energy is moving slower and denser is to actually, re and more densely, it is actually to remember, it is in my highest good. It is in my highest good. Because that slower pace is giving you permission and time and space to reevaluate. It is giving you the time and space to begin to reattune. It is giving you this, the time and space to begin to reshape your trajectory. And then when that reattunement has happened, then you can start moving at a faster speed. One of the first mistakes we make is we begin to assume there is something wrong with my core essence. Whereas very often, it is the first time in a long time you, that you are actually paying attention 
to the calling. That you are actually paying attention to that voice within you that is asking of you. Hey, this is not the life that I intended. This is not the life that I intended. Here's a mantra that I love to use with myself when I feel like I am in one of these transitional spaces. It's as if you are in the birth canal, attempting to birth a new identity, and yet you don't want to emerge on the other side. And it makes sense. We all have our fears. We sometimes fear the unknown, the unseen. We lack trust with what is coming, trust with the universe at times, and it makes sense. A mantra that I like to use is, I give permission. I give permission to embody more fully what my soul intended. I give permission to embody more fully the design that my soul intended. So when you meet your soul with the, with the grace of compassion in that space, you open more of the pathway. The resistance can begin to dissolve. When you give yourself permission to start making small steps to, to realign yourself, the resistance begins to dissolve. When you do the work to actually start meeting your own resistance, meeting your own saboteur, meeting all the parts of you that are standing in the way, the resistance begins to dissolve. And if you actually need help with that, I have a free resource. It's called the Shadow Integration Mini Course. It is free. You can go on one of the links in the description or on my website xavierdagba.com and you're going to find it. Please download it. It can support you tremendously. Now back to the topic. It's usually we need to recognize that it is actually appropriate. Energy is serving you. It is in your favor. Like the universe around you is actually much more benevolent than you giving it credit. And it's indeed serving you. And when you take the invitation to do the work, to realign yourself, and then to move at faster speed once you are more in tune with your own values, with your highest values, or once you have allowed that new identity to be birthed, you realize that these moments of spiritual depression, which are actually moments of transition, are not moments to be feared. There is so much stigma around the feeling of being depressed. There is so much stigma. We pathologize it, we medicate it, because this is what our culture does recent, uh, a lot lately. Whereas when you are able to descend more light in that space, there's a recalibration that happens. I'm inviting you to do just that. I'm inviting you to experiment with that if you're navigating this. Because at that moment, what is happening is there is more of your own light that wants to enter your psyche, your body. That is actually what is happening. I'd love to finish this with a special invitation. We just started, we just launched our new membership community. It is called the Embodied Life Project. And we are welcoming our first founding members for this new experience. This is a community where the intent is to help you become more intimate with your light and dissolve the hidden forces that are keeping you from shining bright, from unleashing your voice, from serving from your heart. We just announced it, and I'm inviting you to check it out, to go in the description to explore the Embodied Light Project. Enrollment is open until June 8th. And this is something that has the capacity to completely shift your own trajectory. We have a library of over 150 hours of facilitation that I offered in masterclasses and teachings that can be tremendously transformational about the shadow, about the inner child, masculine and feminine, about your own highest values, about how to reclaim the light that we often bury in the dark. I'm inviting you to check that out. The Embodied Light Project is launched. And this is a place where you get to be around people that have your back and nurture your light. Thank you for being here and I'll see you soon.